empty the chamber on And how do you do that? We're six seconds, point eight, point B, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to the Scoop World Order Prototype Quarterback Edition. Today is a great day. We are very excited for some news that Nevada Buck has. We uh, are on fire right now on BuckeyeScoop.com. It's been an unbelievable run uh, through spring ball. Uh, we're counting on the last three days of spring ball. It's Thursday. Then we've got Friday and Saturday spring game. And then players are done. They get to go like this. So... Uh, it's always a good time for the players the Saturday after the spring game when they know they don't have to practice for, you know, a handful of months and they got summer conditioning coming up. So uh, with that, we're going to get into it. Again, we appreciate you. We just passed 14,000 subscribers. That is not an accident. Uh, you guys are unbelievable. Uh, you guys are subscribing to the channel. You're liking the videos, commenting on the videos. Uh, you know, we're going to get into some Dylan Arreola stuff. Comment what quarterback... Um, you know, from the NFL or maybe college that Dylan reminds you of. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to be talking Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. He's the number one player in the entire country, any position for 2024. So uh, we're excited about him. He's going to be a superstar. But thank you so much for liking the video, for commenting, uh, subscribing to the channel, you know, sharing it with your friends because it's noticeable. Our videos are exploding and it's all thanks to you. Uh, so with that, I'm going to bring in. Nevada Buck. Nevada, how are you tonight? Great. Great day in uh, Ohio State land. You some, got some big news about Dylan Rayola and his uh, intentions with Ohio State. And this is uh, certainly something that, you know, we, you know, recruiting is always important in terms of, you know, having your players and you're only as good as the guys that, that you have there. And at, and at the key position of quarterback, I think Ohio State just got a, uh, got a little bit better and took an, took another step today. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, um, you did your equal signs for some people that might not be on Buckeye scoop.com. Explain what it means when you say Dylan rail equals Buckeye, uh, kind of explain how that is your, your, um, your signature thing you do with recruits. Well, anytime that, you know, that a player or someone, very close to a player gives the, the indication of the Ohio State staff that they are committing to Ohio State and that their intention is to come to Ohio State, then I'll put the uh, the equal sign on them. I've been doing this for about 20 years. Um, they have a very, very high hit rate with this and you know, try to be selective in terms of when to pull it out. Uh, but pulled it out today on, on, on Dylan. have got some really good indications, some really good news. And... Uh, you know, he's coming back out for the, the spring game this weekend. And uh, all indications are that he's going to be a Buckeye and and that he wants to lead the 2024 cl class as, as premier quarterbacks would often do. And for, uh, you know, Ohio State fans, like I said, it doesn't get much bigger than this number one player in the country. Um, can do it all. Born leader, born alpha. Um, just, you know, like I said, just a great kid from an NFL family and, and just a huge kit for Ohio State. Yeah, and and you know our our title for this segment is Rayola Ring Later. Talk a little bit about you know when you can get a kid who is a five star, number one overall in his class recruit to commit this early. What does that do in terms of leadership for a class? In terms of recruiting, you know, skill positions, offensive linemen, even defensive personnel. What does it do when you get that alpha in this early? How does that impact a recruiting class in your experience? Well, it's it's like it's the most important position on the field, and everybody knows that. And everybody knows that you know, before they come to school, they want to know who the quarterback's going to be. And uh, in this case, to have a guy like that, and, and, and Dylan, you know, not all quarterbacks are created equal. Not all kids are created equal. But Dylan's a a natural leader. He's a guy that likes to go out and recruit other kids. And when you've got a quarterback like this, it's a heck of a lot easier to get those premier wide receivers, those premier running backs, and you know, even the defense. But you know, people want to go where they're going to have a chance to win where they can get see the trophies where they can win the national championships and dylan's the type of kid that you build your your, uh, your team around and you build your team toward so it's it's you know I can't, I can't emphasize enough how how big it is from a just you know for just what he can bring to the team but also the type of players that he can bring around him to the team it's 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 really something remarkable 
Yeah, and, and Dylan's ascension has been notable. I mean, he's ascended to the number one player in the country in both on threes rankings and two four sevens rankings. He is a fantastic player. His dad is a longtime fantastic NFL player for the Detroit Lions. Uh, and Dylan grew up around Calvin Johnson, Matthew Stafford. Uh, his quarterback coach now is Drew Stanton, who uh, former teammate of mine, a Michigan State quarterback for some of you guys from the mid two thousands. We played against them up there in 06. and. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of upside, man. And and you see Corey Dennis there. And, you know, these guys are all working in coordination with Drew so that he can really be ready to go with Ohio State's um, techniques, verbiage. Uh, so that's like the, the glorious thing about when a kid commits this early and you have all this cohesion and all this unity um, from both, you know, the, the personal coach and position coach and Corey Dennis and, and Ryan Day. It really helps the kid be ready the second he steps on campus to compete for the starting job. So one of the uh, the things that we talked about yesterday is your connection with Brett Getz and the South Florida Express. You've known Brett for a long time. Um, talk a little bit about how Dylan Rayola has has grown to be friends with the South Florida Express. A kid from who's from Arizona is potentially going to be working with the South Florida Express a little bit. Talk about that. Yeah, well, we've, you know, we've talked about, the, you know, they've, you know, they kind of met each other and, and they've kind of invited Dylan to, to quarterback some of their efforts out, out West when they, you know, this, their seven on 17 kind of barnstorms and heads out to the West coast. And, you know, for people that aren't familiar with South Ford Express is loaded with division one athletes and, you know, headlined by the, uh, the two fabulous wide receivers and in, in Tate and Ennis. And, you know, just it's, what's been really interesting is how close they've become with Rayola, how quickly, and there's even word there's like little little you know like I, I don't believe in package deals and I, I never believe the package deals work or anything but there's a talk that a number of kids from South Florida Express were going to follow Dylan Rail to Ohio State if and when he made his commitment down and I I think you know we, we had a kid um, commit yesterday and I think that's the first of a a, a passel of kids that are going to be heading that way because um Dylan's that kind of, you know, he's that kind of leader. And, and again, when you talk to the people down around SFE, they're thinking there's going to be a bunch of them. that are going to be jumping on the Ohio state team all at the same time. And that's certainly exciting news for Ohio state fans is that would, uh, you know, that would be an, an amazing get and something that we never quite ever seen before. Yeah. And, and it's the thing for me where greatness kind of attracts greatness. And when you have a kid like Dylan Rayola, He's a fantastic player, a fantastic quarterback. You know, if I'm a wide receiver and I have the opportunity to be coached by Ryan Day and Brian Hartline and be in this offense with, you know, a, a top 10 draft pick type quarterback, which is what we continue to churn out with Ryan Day in this offense and an NFL style uh, pass protection system, fantastic first round type running backs and Trey Henderson, um, you know, we got Mark Fletcher who actually goes by Q, Q Fletcher, and we also, uh, potentially going to get Richard Young. Like there's just no downside, you know, you want, you know, I, I was in a position when I was recruited to Ohio state, I wanted every good player that we could possibly get, you know, you, you don't, there's no egos. You want to have the best receivers, best quarterbacks, because you know, your skill guys really win you games. You know, we don't beat Michigan without Troy Smith and Ted Ginn and Anthony Gonzalez. And those guys that just made unbelievable plays, Beanie Wells, Pittman, um, you know, you can only block so much. I could get a pancake on literally every single play, but if I can't, if we can't score, it doesn't matter. You know, so I mean, you got ED guys that are difference makers, and I had a front row seat as a starter. you watching San Antonio Holmes just eat Marlon Jackson for lunch in 04 and 05. Watching Anthony Gonzalez make the fantastic catch in 05. 06, Teddy Ginn has 10 catches in the 1 2 game. Uh, Gonzo made plays, Robisky made plays, Hartline made plays. I mean, it just. You need those skill guys, man, and it's exciting to see kind of the this tidal wave of talent that is coming to Columbus right now. Um, you know, we talked briefly about NFL comparisons. You know, people love to throw out Mahomes with Dylan. Uh, who do you see Nevada when you when you watch tape? We're gonna watch a little tape here in a second. When you when you watch and you you talk to people about Dylan Rayola. I mean, to me, the guy that, that seems like the best comp, just again, from a stylistic standpoint, would be a Matthew Stafford, you know, and I, I don't think it's uh, you know, any coincidence that, you know, his dad played for Detroit and, you know, the, the, he grew up 
kind of watching him play because he reminds me a lot of Stafford. He reminds me a lot of, at the age, you, you know, it's kind of eerie how much they remind me, me, me of each other. And um, I think that's a great comparison. But again, you know, when you're talking about a kid that's the, you know, consensus number one quarterback in the country, I mean, it's rare, rare. And, and Dylan can do it all. And, and, you know, again, I, I love his mobility. I love his pocket presence. I love the way he steps up into the throws. I love his quick motion. Uh, there's just so much to like about him that, uh, that, you know, you know, I'm just, I'm really excited to see him in an Ohio state uniform. And I think he's going to do great things. Yeah. And it's, it's funny you say that cause speak of the devil. There's Matthew Stafford, a couple of my former teammates when I was with the lions, Calvin Johnson, there's Dominic Rayola, there's Matthew. Um, you know, and, and I, for some reason, I really love these guys that grow up around NFL teams, NFL players, um, Reminds me a lot of like, you know, the stories of Larry Fitzgerald when he was a ball boy for the Minnesota Vikings. And he grows up with Chris Carter and Randy Moss and uh, Jake Reed, like these fantastic wide receivers. And, you know, it, it's like when they're six, seven, eight years old, 10 years old, and they're ball boys and they're hanging around practice. They, they see what pros do. They see how pros work. They see how pros are. And uh, I think that there's no downside to that. And and his dad was a pros pro. His dad was an absolute warrior, ferocious competitor, as good of a teammate as I ever had at any level of football and uh, just a bad, a bad mamma jamma. I mean, Dominic real was no joke. I mean, he won the Remington at, at Nebraska uh, unanimous all American his senior year. And, you know, and, and, and he knows, you know, when you're guy, around guys like that, no one recruits, they know how to raise their kids to be, you know, to be warriors and tough and smart and to not be clowns and to not be, you know, whatever. So it's, you know, that's why I'm excited, man. Cause you know, Dami, he just, he's a beast, man. And you know, his kid is, you know, he's a little more soft-spoken than Dominic was, but he's every bit as ferocious. And that's really, uh, it's really exciting. Yeah. We, we talked a little bit about the recruiting impact, but, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to take a 23 quarterback or, you know, I don't think they're going to be taking a showstopper uh, by any stretch. So it's going to be interesting to see how the 23, uh, cause you know, they don't, they don't have a guy in, in the hopper right now. Um, nobody seems to stand out. And uh, you know, I think with Dylan being in the fold and with how the room looks now, it's going to be real interesting. But um, you know, do you ever have any worry uh, with kids that commit this early? You know, we've seen he's not that young. I mean, he's only he's going to be a junior. But you've seen quarterbacks that have committed to sophomores, and and have, do you ever have any trepidation when they commit this early? Well, you you always have that, and that's you know that's always the fine line that you're doing because you know the, when I thought about this recruiting impact segment, I'm thinking about you know the other 2024 quarterback, you know, Jaden Davis, in terms of what what potentially could come down, and you know you know our indication is that you know Dylan's the the clear number one for Ohio State, and you know but now you've got kind of the awkward situation where he's coming this weekend, Jaden could be coming this weekend. And, you know, those are, that's, those are tough conversations for, you know, for Ryan where he's got to kind of look at this and thread the needle because like you said, you don't want to scare one kid off while you don't have a solid commitment from the other one and you need to lock that down and be respectful. And so it's tough because they're not going to end up at the same place. You know, kids like that don't go to the same place. They're not, you know, they're not going there to split time. They're going there to be the starter and be the man. And, uh, you know, our indication, I, I think that I, you know, whether or not Dominic actually comes and, in, in, or excuse me, Dylan actually comes and, and uh, commits this weekend, you know, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, formal, but I, my sense is he's almost going to have to because Ohio State's going to want to know where he stands. And, you know, if, if he's not willing to make that commitment there, you know, I think that would be, you know, something that would, that would be concerning for Ohio State and their staff. So I think he's coming to do business. And uh, I think that'll have a significant recruiting impact, like you said, not only on 24, but on 23 as well, where they're not going to bring in some five-star kid in 23 that's going to clog up the uh, the QB room. Yeah, and ever since, you know, maybe around the Justin Fields time, uh, you know, where, where kids could get, you know, back then they had to get like a waiver to be immediately eligible. Um, you know, Thomas Mars would do his, his deal and get Justin Fields eligible immediately for whatever, um, whatever reason. But, you know, now with the portal – it's literally insane, you know, because again, we went through the Quinn Ewers deal last year where, you know, we get the number one player reclassified, shows up, he's here for four months, gone, goes to Texas, you know, he's lighting up, you know, Texas's spring ball right now. But yeah, with these quarterbacks, man, there's big money at stake. I mean, you see what these new deals are. I mean, 
Derek Carr got a three-year, $120 million deal. So it's like, there's a lot of money at stake. And these kids, you know, if you don't play, you're not going to get drafted. And you don't have to play at Bama or at Ohio State. I mean, Trey Lance went to, you know, North Dakota State or whatever. And, and, and he literally, you know, was drafted higher than Justin Fields was. So, I mean, there's, but you got to be out there playing somewhere. Like Joe Flacco couldn't beat out Tyler Palco back in the day. And, you know, he goes to, to Delaware and goes to the senior bowl, lights it up, goes first round and has made a fortune in the league. You know, so these kids, yeah, they just got to go through a somewhere. You know, I mean, you, you don't have to go to LSU like Joe Burrow did, but you got to go somewhere and play. And so it's it's going to be crazy, you know, until they put some restrictions on the portal, which I think they have to at some point because the game is insane right now. It's going to be one of those things where we're going to be watching, uh, you know, with kind of bated breath to see who sticks in the room, who moves on. You know, does anybody move on after spring ball or, you know, in camp? I mean, that's the amazing thing is we think about last year, you know, we lost, you know, Quinn years after four months. We, you know, we lost Ryan Jacoby after a week of, of training camp. You know, I mean, you know, guys is, are taking off and I'm sure we're going to have a handful of guys leave in the portal after spring ball. But uh, we'll get into some, uh, I'm going to get some film going right now just so that we have something to talk over. But, um, you know, your initial reaction to, uh, to Dylan, you know, kind of given every indication he's coming. Um, were you surprised that it, it moved this quick, uh, given, you know, his stature being the number one player in 2024? Well, I think it, you know, it, it did. And I think really what kind of tipped the scales was, you know, it, it's it's always been kind of shaping up as being a USC, Ohio State battle for, for Dylan and and. You know, I think USC made some mistakes. They made some mistakes in the recruiting game. And I think D Dylan and his family have kind of taken it as a sign that that's not where he's supposed to go and that he needs to go to Ohio State. And sometimes that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that little indicator that, you know, does it feel like home? Am I homesick? Um, what, you know, do I like the colors? What's the school you like? And he just feels like he's home at Ohio State. And, um, I, I think once you know, you kind of know, it's kind of like when you meet that right girl, you come, you kind of know, I think he kind of knows where he wants to be. And, uh, so there's going to, there's going to be a match. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, again, I always talk about quarterbacks and you do as well. You know, the infrastructure is so critical. Um, you know, having the linemen, you know, having the skill players is huge. The development, I think personally, and obviously this isn't going to be be me shedding light on something that isn't obvious but i think if you're in columbus ohio it's less distracting than being in hollywood and los angeles and sc and you know that's the sc thing's beautiful but i mean you know there's kids that can they can't handle it you know they they want to go hollywood and you know we've seen kids from you know like i mean uh andre walker went out there you know to be hollywood and it's like you never heard from him again you know there's guys that you know they kind of get intoxicated by the life of you know hollywood hills and all that and la and and, you know, it's, it's great. It's beautiful. It's amazing weather and stuff. But I mean, you know, it, it, you know, is that going to be the place that best develops you? I mean, some kids can handle it. I mean, obviously they've been fantastic in the past. You know, when I played, they were, they were the, the Clemson, the Bama, when they had Leinert and Bush and Lendell White and, you know, NFL players everywhere, they were monsters, but you know, they've fallen off substantially, you know, Lincoln Riley's going to restock that entire roster basically. And that takes time. And, you know, to Ohio State's credit, you know, our roster is pretty loaded right now. You know, there's always going to be some bare spots with the portal. And, you know, talk a little bit about that. Because me and you, you know, we, we have our theories on the portal with with quarterback and offensive line specifically as, as positions that don't rotate. But talk a little bit about, you know, how depth the, the depth has changed across college football. I mean, Alabama's dealing with it. Georgia's dealing with it. We're dealing with it. But talk a little bit about how that how that's changed at the positions that don't rotate as much. Well, I think that's, you know, you made that point the other day and I thought it was just, it was a really great point and, and a really smart point and one that people don't talk about a lot, but, you know, you look at these, these portal movement and, you know, it's that kicker, it's that offensive lineman, it's that quarterback, you know, because these are positions where you're not rotating guys, you know, you know, the starting five on the offensive line plays until the, uh, the outcome's no longer in doubt, you know, win or lose. And the quarterback does the same thing. And, you know, it, and if you're the backup kicker, you're not, you're not kicking or the backup punter. So like, these are positions where when only one guy plays or only a you know, set group, you're not getting rotations, like wholesale rotations at wide receiver or wholesale, you know, rotations on the uh, defensive line that guys are going to be moving. And uh, like you said, when there's no limitation to movement, 
it, it changes everything. So, you know, the, I think the expectation of having depth any more or credible depth at those positions specifically for college football teams is it's, it's just over. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to have three great quarterbacks like USC did, you know, with, with John David Booty and Leinert and whomever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're just not going to have that anymore. It's just going to be, it, it's going to be, you know, one and done and you're going to have to mine the portal and, and pick your guy and hopefully you make a commitment to him. And he's going to want to make sure that there's nobody coming in before him and that you're not recruiting over him. And, you know, it's a, uh, it's a whole new game. I, I do not envy the coaches for this because I think their, their life and trying to build these rosters just got a hundred times more challenging. You know, I, I've used the example. It's like if you're in the NFL and everybody was on one day contracts that oh. were instantly voidable. You know, yeah. it, it would, you just, how, how do you build a team? Yeah. And, and I, I keep rewinding this. I mean, this is an unbelievable throw. You know, he's off platform, you know, I mean, and this is what you talk about when you talk about special, cause this is an NFL throw cause NFL throws are, you know, there's always a, a pocket that's breaking down a guy in your face, a guy hanging on you. And, you know, the whip here, how you can get this to the corner of the end zone, and put it right on the money is almost insane. And that's why, you know, when you get excited about watching a quarterback, it's not the clean pocket throws. It's the ones that where there's duress and, you know, you don't want the quarterback to be under duress, but, you know, and, and when you're at Ohio State, he shouldn't be under duress much. But, you know, when you're in the NFL, you know, and you've got to start a practice squad right guard because the starters hurt or, you know, a guy gets cut or, you know, they cut a guy because he's too expensive and, you know, you're not going to have five pro bowlers up front. So, I mean, you got to make some throws sometimes when there's guys in your face, guys in your lap. Uh, the NFL is a different animal, man, because they only dress seven alignment on game day. They don't have five stars everywhere. Um, so, I mean, you got to be able to, to move around and make these throws and you watch him run around and do some of the stuff and you're just, it's stunning. It's exciting. But yeah, the roster management thing for me is it's, it would almost be sickening, you know, when you're, you know, a school like Georgia and you put in so much money and effort and time and resources to get, you know, uh, you, you know, Marius Mims, who's a top 10, you know, player in the country, five-star offensive tackle. And he's literally here for one year. And he just transferred out during spring ball, you know, because he realized he wasn't going to start. And, you know, when these, again, like, you know, when these kids are, you know, they've got a lot of money on the line. You know, if you're a five-star kid, then people say, well, he should be out in three years and he should be in the league as a first rounder in three years. And, you know, there's all these things. And, you know, if you're going into year two and you look like you're a backup or a third stringer, then, you know, these guys are like, well, I can go to Miami and start this. I go to Florida state and start this year and I got to get on the field. And, and sometimes, you know, these kids are, you know, some of them aren't the most stable. Some of them are homesick. Some of them don't have great people around them uh, in terms of their their parents or their advisors or their uncle or whoever it is. And, you know, they'll, 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 they'll pollute these kids' heads and say, hey, you know, you should be starting. Hey, you know, if you – I talked to this assistant coach at Florida State or Miami or wherever, and, you know, he says he'd take your, you know, a high school coach or whatever or a seven-on-seven seven coach. Like, not everybody has these kids – long-term best intentions at hand and some of them mean well but they're just too short-sighted like they don't trust the process they don't trust hey you know fight it out you know hey you're at a good place because you know with ohio state no place on earth is going to develop you better than ohio state with mickey marati our strength program you know ryan day you know ryan day is pretty entrenched at ohio state i mean i think that with his talent he's always going to be you know getting looked at by nfl teams but i think that you know, he likes it here, you know, and Brian Hartline isn't really dying to go anywhere. Um, you know, I think he wants to be the head coach, you know, whenever Ryan's done and, you know, he's making almost a million years a receiver coach. Corey Dennis is here with, with Nikki Meyer, urban's daughter. Um, so you got a lot of guys that, you know, they're not really dying to move unless they get some incredible offer. You know, I mean, no one, everyone's as faithful as their offer as their offers when it comes to being a college football coach or an NFL coach. But you know, we got a lot of guys that have a lot of reasons that want to stay here long term and, and they like it here. You know, Kevin, I think Kevin Wilson's as good of an offensive mind as there is in football. And, you know, he, you know, he, I don't think he, you know, he's going to look at some head coaching jobs, but he's not a guy who, you know, I, I think is going to get poached, you know, annually, like he was up for the Akron job, but like, do you really want to take the Akron job where you're going to have the worst talent in the Mac? And, you know, it's just, it's, you know, that's a hard job. You know I mean? It'd have to be like a substantial deal. And, and I, I think, you know, having him as the OC, lets me sleep like a baby at night. It's like having Jim Knowles at DC. I mean, you got two guys that are really, really sharp. They're really good. 
uh, really progressive with their their football ski uh, schematics, and you know you just you get excited to watch it. But yeah, I just I love watching Dylan, man. He he it's some of these throws he makes. Like this is I mean that last one's off his back foot, and he just drops it right in the basket like he's like he's playing catch in the backyard. You know, and again, there's pressure. And I don't know if he has to fade like this, but you know, this is like shooting like a fadeaway three pointer from the corner, and he just drops it right in the basket, and it's it's just fun to watch. Like I love watching that stuff. But uh, any any additional thoughts? I mean, we've watched probably you know 15 clips so far, but you can see why everyone's excited about this kid, right, Nevada? Yeah, no. I mean, again, it just you know, for me though, it's you know, I try not to get too excited about kids, but knowing the kind of family that he comes from, knowing the kind of person that he is. I just think, you know, he'll really be in a position to, to thrive at Ohio state. And um, I'm just really excited about the addition and, and about what he's, what he brings to the, the team, the, the intangibles, because uh, that type of stuff is really how you put teams together and how you win. And, and he's got all the attributes. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, being a pro, when you grow up with watching Matthew Stafford at practice every day and, and Drew Stanton and, Calvin Johnson and you know some of these incredible athletes that he's his dad is best friends with literally like I mean you know and he's grown up with those guys and you know he can go train with Matt Stafford and you know it's like it, it sounds small and insignificant but man it's like you know if you're a goalie and you can work out with like Patrick Wall and Martin Broder and learn their tips and tricks and the things that they wish they knew when they were a 17 year old like that's the thing that's that's fun is when you can you know, get knowledge from professionals that are the highest paid players in the world at their position and then say, Hey, this is something that I look at when, you know, when a safety does this, I expect this coverage, you know, when, when, you know, when I see this fire zone coming, I always check to this route because it's always open. Like there's all these little nuanced things that people don't really see unless they really are deep into the study of the game. And that's why it's fun. Cause a guy like Matt Stafford is as talented of a thrower as I've ever seen ever seen is maybe he's ever been I mean his arm talent is his 99 out of 100 attribute and he uh you know I remember when I played at Detroit I would, I would just be marveled at some of these throws he would make and he does it so effortless effortlessly and that's something that I think that you know the great ones can do they make the easy throws super easy they make the hard throws easy um you know because it's, it's not as easy as it looks you know like when you know Cooper Cup goes insane this year you know, with Stafford, it's, it's not, you know, that's a lot of chemistry. It's a lot of arm talent. And obviously Cooper Cup is a fantastic talent, but you know, it's, it's, it's the whole kind of combination of it, but that's going to be the interesting thing to see. You know, cause he's only going to be a junior and with the, you know, if, if he has a little more time next year with the South Florida express and, you know, I, I know, you know, Tate and Ennis are going to their senior years and, you know, they're a year ahead of them, but you know, the chemistry he builds with them and then even the guys that are year younger, because, you know, does he play a few more seven on seven tournaments to, to get some of these receivers that are in his class that are on the South Florida Express? Because they got they got ballers everywhere, and they got ballers that are in his grade too, not just the seniors and Innocent Tate. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited about it. But uh, we'll wrap this one up, man. You got uh any closing thoughts on on Dylan Rayola? Um, you know, it's the end of spring. They practice today. Uh, we'll have a report on that um, probably tomorrow. But um, any closing thoughts on Dylan Rayola? Just looking forward to the spring game and looking forward to seeing if we get any uh, type of formal commitment action this week. We'll definitely be on commitment watch, and uh, we'll see what happens. Should be a, a pretty eventful uh, weekend for so people should stay stay close to the uh, the site because action could be happening. Yeah, it's going to be a huge weekend, and uh, that's what that's what's fun, man. It's fun to be on the board. So with that, you know, uh, we're going to wrap this thing up. And again, we appreciate you guys so much. You know, we just watched some film of Dylan Rayola. I would love for you to comment and let me know who he reminds you of. If it's Rogers, Mahomes, um, you know, Matt Stafford, who Nevada went with. I, I think he's he he reminds me a lot of Mahomes. Uh, kind of the mobility, the stature. But you know, and Matt Stafford's arm talent is out of this world. So you know, I, I'll take either of them. You know, both you know NFL Hall of Fame quarterbacks. But you know, um. We appreciate you guys so much. You know, leave us a like if you uh, if you feel wonderful and want to help us out because it really um, it really affects how many uh, people can find our video. So the comments are amazing, the likes are amazing. You know, I try to correspond with you guys in the comment section. Um, I actually dusted my entertainment section because that's one of the bad parts of 4K is that somebody literally said, 
man, you got a Dusty Entertainment thing. And I was like, man, I love I love the Scoop family and the, and the fans of the site because I was dying laughing at that. I literally was like, man, I better go Dusk. But, you know, we invested in 4K cameras and, man, that Dusk really does show up, doesn't it? So but we appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm heading to the boards on BuckeyeScoop.com. It's never been a better time to be a member of BuckeyeScoop.com, the largest Ohio State site in existence. Our inside information is flowing, and it's been an unbelievable run for us. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you, Scoop family. Thank you, Buckeye Nation. You guys have a great day, and go Bucks.